Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. In today's video I'm going to be talking about the pressure grip and the timing grip in more detail and comparing the two and I'm going to be asking you the question which one do you think is better? You decide and feel free to let me know in the comment section below. It'll be interesting to see which grip gets the most votes and if you do enjoy the video please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. Now, whichever grip you choose to work on, the first step for me is to put the cue flat on the bed of the table and then to pick it up with the grip hand. And that's how you should hold the cue with your grip hand. Now, the pressure grip is one of the top two main grips that the top snooker player uses. Ronnie O'Sullivan, Mark Williams and Jack Lazowski use the pressure grip within their snooker games and I always say to form the rock on symbol with the pressure grip because the main pressure on the pressure grip is with these two middle fingers and the thumb which wrap around the cue and form quite a firm loop not too tight not too loose there shouldn't be any daylight around the snooker cue it should be quite flush first finger and the small finger wrap around the cue with the two middle fingers but they relax onto the cue and they do very little with the pressure grip. I think it's a bit too far to say that the first finger and the small finger do absolutely nothing to contribute towards the function of the pressure grip. The reason I say that is because when you get down on the cue to play the shot and you bring the cue backwards, the small finger relaxes off the cue and opens up slightly, which helps to keep the cue level. And when you push the cue forward to the chest, the first finger relaxes off the cue and enables you to get the cue into the back of the hand on the final strike. The first step to developing the pressure grip, I think, is to try and play a couple of basic shots with just the two middle fingers and the thumb wrapped around the cue and the first and the small finger hanging loose off the cue. And the idea is, is that you remember where the pressure is with these two middle fingers and the thumb so that then when you go back down to play the conventional shots with the pressure grip, you'll hopefully remember what that feels like and it will make the grip developing the pressure grip that little bit easier if you're learning it from scratch. It can be good for a warm-up as well. Step two for developing the pressure grip I would suggest is to give the pressure grip a go and just remember from the previous exercise where that pressure was and see if you can put it into practice on a couple of the basic shots. Remembering to relax the first finger off the cue when you push the cue through to the chest on the final strike because this helps to keep the cue level and straight. But most importantly, and a major advantage with the pressure grip, is that this helps you to get more follow through on the cue action than the timing grip does. Now, the second of the two grips is the timing grip. And I always say to form the AOK -okay sign. And the reason I say that is because the main pressure with this grip is on the first finger and the thumb, which form a loop around the cue like this. And they grip the cue not too tight, not too loose. It should be flush around the cue. And these three fingers are on the cue, but they're relaxed and they're doing almost nothing. The reason I emphasize the word almost nothing with these three fingers when they're on the cue is because when you're down on the shot and you bring the cue backwards, they do help to secure the cue and complete the grip. And when you bring the cue backwards, they naturally open. And when you bring the cue forward, they naturally close onto the cue. And this just helps the cue be delivered on a level plane during the cue action. Now, because you can't generate as much follow through with the timing grip as you can the pressure grip, one of the things that you can do is use the wrist more to get the power into the shot. And the way in which you can do this is when you bring the cue, um, the wrist is just generally looser on the timing grip. But when you bring the cue back, the fingers, the back three fingers open up more. And this enables you to bring the wrist back further than you normally would. And then when you can push the cue through to the chest, and it's the chest that stops the cue uh, on the final strike. So the first step to developing the timing grip, I think, is to play a few basic shots with just the first finger and the thumb wrapped around the cue. 
and the three fingers hanging off the cue loose. And you want to try to remember where the pressure is on the timing grip. So when you go to play your conventional shots, it'll hopefully make developing the timing grip just a little bit easier. Remember, you can use more wrist on the back swing, and it's the cue that stop, it's the chest that stops the cue when you push it through to the chest. The next step in the process to develop in the timing grip, I think, is to give the timing grip a go with some basic shots. Observe the wrist on the back swing. So the million dollar question is, which is better, the pressure grip or the timing grip? There are a few factors to think about. The first factor I would suggest, and just to reiterate, the pressure grip enables you to get more follow through and more length of follow through on the final strike than the timing grip. And if you as a player feel that this can help you get through the cue ball better, you may be more likely to favor the pressure grip. Now the timing grip requires you to use more of the wrist and especially on the power shots you'll need to use the wrist flick to get the action on the cue ball and to generate the power on the shots and some players feel that this can help get the smooth power required on some more of the power shots and some players feel that this can help them get the timing on the shot and if you're one of these players you may favor the timing grip over the pressure grip Another factor which you may inevitably consider when you're deciding which is better between the pressure grip or the timing grip is when you observe which of the grips the top professional players use and which of the top professional players are most successful with the grip that they've chosen to use. For example, Ronnie O'Sullivan, who uses the pressure grip, is one of the most successful players, if not the most successful player, to ever pick up a snooker cue. And so it may be that some players look at this and come to the conclusion that the pressure grip must be better because Ronnie O'Sullivan uses the pressure grip and he's one of the most successful players in the world. If you do consider this in your decision making between the pressure grip and the timing grip, you may want to consider the timing grip into some more detail. And remember that Neil Robertson and Judd Trump used this grip. And although they might not have won as many world titles as Ronnie O'Sullivan, they do compete well at the very top of the sport. And they are two of the players with the most smooth cue power that exist in the professional tour. So the timing grip is still a very solid grip to use should you decide that that one is better over the pressure grip. Another very important factor that you may want to consider when deciding which is better between the pressure grip and the timing grip is the suitability of the grip for the player. Every player is different and some players may pick up the pressure grip faster and better than they do the timing grip and some players may pick up the timing grip better and faster than they do the pressure grip. The suitability on the grip may depend on the type of player and the way in which the player delivers the cue action. The grip that enables the player to play their most natural game may be worth a thought as well. So which one of the grips is better, the pressure grip or the timing grip? Feel free to let me know in the comments section. I don't want to sway you on this, but I think I know what the likely answer may be. And if you did enjoy watching the video, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And until next time, cheers.